Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Ford. I am a general dentist in Huntington Beach, California, which is down in Southern California, just south of uh, Los Angeles. Um, I wanted to give you uh, at least my thoughts on kind of what's going on and how what's going on and how we can prepare for what's next and how to really optimize this time that we have down to tighten up that spring so we can really springboard forward and really capture um, some business opportunities and some business growth uh, moving forward and, and how to kind of how to look at that, how to view that, how to change our mindset a little bit and, th and see things a little bit differently and change our perspective. I think it's safe to say uh, about two and a half to three weeks ago, all of us were in cruise control. We were going about our normal days, uh, going about our normal practice routine, doing fillings, doing crowns, doing extractions, doing implants, using our CEREC machines, using the Orlofos for 3D scanning, using our Prime Scan for Sure Smile, and getting patients in aligners, and, and going about our normal routines and, and having a pretty good flourishing business. Um, I think things have changed, um, and we all came to a point uh, where we hit a roadblock. We hit this dead end and we weren't able to do the things that we normally do. Uh, and we had to make some changes in our normal day-to-day -day lives uh, that everyone had to do. Everyone's in the same boat. Nothing is normal. Um, and it became this windy road of us trying to become HR experts and knowing what to do and how to handle our team members and how to get them to a point where everyone is comfortable. And it's not this straight, easy path. It is a series of windy curves moving forward 100, uh, 100 yards at a time, going backwards, going side to side, kind of navigating that abyss or that forest or whatever you want to call it ahead. Um, but I wanted us to take a couple steps back and kind of look at this video because I think it puts a lot of things um, in perspective. It may be called the awareness test, but I think it's called the uh, perspective test. So I want everyone to watch the team in white and how many passes does that team in white really concentrate because it does get a little confusing when everyone starts moving around side to side. Count, count, count. Make sure you keep your eye on the ball and make sure you are counting, which I think it's about to stop right now. And the answer was 13. Hopefully most of you got that. Uh, but let's rewind it real quick, because if we didn't see, or we weren't watching or looking for a moon walking bear, we probably completely missed it. So I think all of us saw the same thing, but we now can see something completely different when a moonwalking bear, I wouldn't really call it moonwalking, kind of walks into the picture. So this was for the, the purpose of this video was this for the city of London to make sure that cars don't hit bicycle, bicycle, bicycles on the road. Um, but I think it, it, it's not just only an awareness test, but a perspective test. And to start looking at things from a different viewpoint and a different vantage point. I remember a couple years ago sitting in one of Frank Spears lectures, he went through the phases of learning and he got into a little bit more detail on the different phases of learning and, and how we can see things different and how to look for things in the mouth differently. But it ultimately came down to a real quick uh, saying is you don't know what you don't know. You know what you don't know is the kind of the second phase of learning. And then eventually you know what you know and it becomes this unconscious competence is that it becomes second nature and we really don't uh, don't uh, don't have to think about the things that we know. It just kind of rolls off uh, our, our fingers when we're drilling a crown. We, we've done crowns thousands and thousands of times and it just becomes second nature uh, to us. Um, but that video is to show that it's easy to miss things that you're not looking for. You can't uh, you can't unsee something and you can't unlearn something. And the other thing is you can't worry about what you can't what, what you can't control. You can really only affect the thing. You can control what you can can take care of. And I think that's what we need to focus on on the next couple of weeks, months, to really focus on our teams, focus on ourselves, to kind of move forward. So uh, my wife, my kids, and I we went on our social distancing walk to get out of the house, to get out of the office. 
Uh, and luckily we have this uh, gorgeous beach about a mile from my house. So we walked down to the beach, we were walking across the sand, we came to like this kind of uh, hump and then we came down to the water's edge. And the first thing I did is yes, I waited, I looked, I made sure he was breathing and we didn't have to start doing CPR and call the lifeguard. He was. The second thing was I thought this picture summarized kind of what the world was going through right now. This guy looks helpless and it's kind of how the world, how everyone feels right now. Uh, we don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle things. And we just sit there helpless. And I was sitting there watching this guy, took the picture, and literally seconds after I took the picture, he stood up full of energy and started sprinting down the beach with his board in, board in his hand. And it kind of put things in perspective for me. I wasn't seeing that when I initially saw him. I saw that as he was completely helpless, needing to rest up um, and get some more energy uh, to kind of go on about his normal day. When he sprinted off, it, it changed my mindset. It was he was internalizing things, learning and kind of how to mentally get himself in the right state of mind. So instead of being helpless, is how can we prepare for what's next? He was internalizing it, whether it be meditation or thinking thoughts or ready to springboard from moving forward. That's what he was going to do. So that kind of made me thought about this little graft, which I always keep in the back of my back of my mind. And it really looks at things from like the 10,000 foot level or from outer space or from a much, much bigger picture. And I think this is what all organic things do. It's everyone, everything, every business, every person goes through these different stages and it's a cycle. You can call it the cycle of life. Some people call it the seasons. Uh, spring and summer is growth. Summer to the end of fall is stagnation. Fall is kind of the decay. And then winter is this repose or where we're kind of uh, hibernating or getting our energy uh, for what's to come. Um, I think business cycles through this, if you look at the big picture, we've had uh, kind of the Great Depression, then we had the uh, kind of the buildup, we've had uh, kind of the, the bubble burst um, with the uh, internet bubble in the early 2000s, we had this huge growth phase, then we had the Great Recession, we've had this amazing period of growth, and now we've kind of hit this, uh, I don't know what you're going to call it, but this this moment of pause is how old, it, how old it cause it. But it's this repose, growth, stagnation, and decay. I think we can look at it from our growth cycle, from our business. Uh, our, our, our dental practices, we want to stay in this growth phase for as long as we can. Um, but there are times, and I've, uh, I've been aware of the times in my own practice where I had to realize I wasn't in the growth phase anymore. I was in the stagnation phase, and I was running, running, running and there wasn't an in increase in production uh, and we had to get ourselves and realize we were in that phase of stagnation and get us through kind of a little bit of rebranding rebuilding to get into decay to get into repose and kind of growth and i think one of the main things that helped me get out of that phase about five years ago was bringing sarah uh, into my practice i was able to realize and kind of shift out of that stagnation of my practice was doing the exact same number year after year after year and just plateauing and no matter how much I could do, there's almost, almost only so much drill and fill that I could do in my practice. Um, PPOs or HMOs were dictating the fees that I could do. Um, there was only so much time that I could, I could do. There was an increase in my supplies, an increase in my rent, an increase in my, uh, my wages that I was paying my team. And I could only produce a certain amount each each year. And I think that's where a lot of dentists just in general get until they have to do something or, or one, they have to realize they're in that phase. They're not in that growth phase. They're actually truly in the stagnation phase. And they have to get through them, get through the cycle of decay, repose, getting re-energized, and then they're able to hit the growth cycle. And bringing the CEREC into my practice was able to transition me to the decay of repose and back into that growth cycle. Um, the other thing that I think we now have a little bit more time on is it's just not our, our business that 
goes through this life cycle, um, these four stages. I think every facet of our life, whether it be our personal lives with our family, um, I think there's different phases that we go through with our significant others, with our with our children. And I think now we have a little bit of more time to kind of foster um, that growth period and, and make some good connections. And if we were not having great relationships, move away from that stagnation and really re-energize and refocus um, on uh, getting, um, taking some time, taking some focus and really growing and, and fostering some of those personal relationships as well. And I think we also have to realize that None of us, I can, I think I can safely say this, are in the growth phase of our practice, especially in the last two weeks. And it's how do we focus on getting out of that growth phase, realizing that we want to get out of the stagnation and decay phase as fast as we possibly can, and get into that, that, that station of repose so when we are allowed to go back to our practices, we can hit the ground running, hit that springboard, and, and foster some, some growth. And maybe take advantages of some practices, whether uh, they still think they're in that growth phase or in their denial and they're truly in that stagnation phase is to take on um, some patient, to take on some patient base and really grow the practice and and hit that ground running uh, when we get back. So I, it's, this little slide is really important to me. It's something that I think about maybe not daily, but weekly or monthly to see where I am in all phases of my, my, my practice. Um, and but my personal life and to also think of this is our practice can be growing and continue to grow but maybe we start adding on some small little um, additional services whether it be sleep or surgical extractions or implants um, or something if we're if we're just bringing Sarah on to our practice maybe we're adding anterior crowns maybe we're in, adding implant crowns maybe we're adding Maryland bridges and maybe our our practice is in a stage of growth, but maybe we personally can be in uh, in this stage and adding those different services and knowing where we are in that learning process for each of those little steps. So we can really foster and keep our practice in the growth phase, but work on ourselves personally to allow that practice to stay in that growth phase for as long as possible. And I think this goes uh, is a very simple diagram, but it's something that we can take across um, our entire spectrum of business, personal, and personal life. So that being said, let's, let's take a couple steps back and how do we deal with getting through this cycle? And I often tell my team is I want you guys to be comfortable being uncomfortable in my office. I'm going to be constantly introducing things that may not work, um, but they may work really well. And it's how we get get into that 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 mindset of doing being uncomfortable um doing something outside our comfort zone every single day um maybe every single week or maybe some of the big things like for me in my practice i brought sarah on then i was focusing on that first year on just sarah restorations implant restoration anterior restorations for the first year and being uncomfortable and knowing what patients to pick um and knowing that if, if we're focusing on just the dental world, um, start planning ahead, setting our goals and our mindset of what we want to have short-term goals, if we want to have long-term goals, and how we pre-plan for CE um, and continuing education and what things we want to bring on. So for me personally, this particular year, um, let's kind of backtrack. Like I said, a couple years ago, it was CEREC, CEREC restorations. Then... Once I had a digital scanner, it was bringing on clear aligners, bringing on sure smile. Uh, the following year it was doing sleep, bringing sleep tests into my office, bringing opti sleeps, bringing prosomnus, doing all the different, uh, getting uh, getting um, comfortable talking to patients. And this year it was then bringing implants on. And the first step in my implant journey was starting to do more surgical extractions. So luckily, for me, and it's helped out tremendously in the past two weeks, is that I took a surgical extraction or an implant course, um, and the first step in that process was surgical extractions, and that first weekend was laying flaps, um, putting in membranes, putting in bone grafts, and that's come in handy 
um, and brought on additional services that has helped my office in the last two weeks. I've probably done 10 or 15 surgical extractions. And the great time about right now is that luckily I was able to perfect my skills. I had, I, there was no rush and no, no time pressure over the last couple of weeks because all I was doing is when the emergency came in, if they needed the, the extraction, we had the extraction and I had some extra time to do that. So it's how do we get comfortable being uncomfortable? And it's, we have to start. We have to put that goal in place. We have to have that start date. So um, let's talk about starting. It's it's having that goal in place, having the, the time um, set aside. So knowing what your short-term goals are, but what your long-term goals are and how we can really move forward and uh, challenge, uh, challenge ourselves to start getting outside our comfort zone. Um, the first step is always going to be the most uncomfortable and it's starting it, planning it, and knowing that just half the battle is won is just by showing up and starting that process. Is don't, don't quit, don't stop, never stop working. Once you've decided you may not see the results right away, you may be scared, you may be uncomfortable doing those procedures um, right off the bat. Um, but that's okay. And I think the biggest uh, issue with dentists is, yeah, if we're doing this procedure for the first time, is how do we get patients uh, to be comfortable doing that? And I think the patients are not the issue. I think it's the dentist that becomes the issue. For me, when I'm bringing on these new procedures, part of my budgeting is knowing that when I come back, I'm doing one or two of these either for free or at cost. And that's part of my CE budget. So I know moving forward, that it's one or two underneath my belt, one or two that I feel comfortable with, and one or two that I can then talk to patients about to get to get more buy-in, uh, to get more treatment acceptance. So um, don't stop, keep working, take those baby steps. Um, you'll eventually get to a point where you are comfortable um, and it's okay to be scared in the beginning. And I think this is, it kind of leads into the next step is push yourself past your comfort zone. Um, every couple weeks I do a yoga class and there's always a point in yoga where I am not being able to touch my toes or I'm not going to be able to do a move. I'm not being able to do my headstand, um, or whatever move, uh, crow, whatever it is that they're doing uh, for that particular day. Um, but the teacher always reminds you is that there's a difference between pain and there's a difference between uncomfortable and being uncomfortable is your body's way of knowing that change is going on and that you're moving in the right direction. So be, start, remind yourself when you start doing some of these things that it's okay to be uncomfortable and that you will continue uh, to move forward and register that, remember that moment, file that away so the next time you add a procedure, next time you start doing something that you haven't done before, you remember that you are, uh, it's okay to be uncomfortable um, and you push yourself, uh, past, uh, that being that, that comfort zone. Embrace the suck. There are going to be times where you feel overwhelmed. There are going to be times where you don't know what you don't know. Um, and there are going to be times where you don't know, or you know what you don't know, and that's going to be uncomfortable. Um, that's going to be a sucky time period, but know that that is going to be a stage of this, uh, this time period. And know that and kind of that leads into the next step is that there are people that have done it before you. There are people that will do it behind you. So there are people pushing you along and there are also people pulling yourself uh, along. And I think one of these things that I think is completely underrated, but I am now looking back and I truly value value that is surround yourself with like-minded people. And the Sarah community has has done this for me. So thank you for everyone that's listen, listening. Um, you've helped tremendously. Um, find those people, find those mentors. Uh, you may have to work on finding those mentors, um, but push, keep pushing, push past your comfort zone to find those people, get their phone numbers, text them, ask them questions. Um, there are more than enough people out there to help you. Uh, they've been there uh, and they will continue to support you and push you forward. So um, surround yourself with those like-minded people. And I can't say enough um, the benefit of the Sarah community uh, with me in the last uh, couple of years. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you some more. Um, 
that kind of then goes to the next step in this uh, seven step cycle is recognize the improvement. You see those first little eight, nine, 10 dots. That was my practice um, when I was truly in stagnation um, and I didn't realize it. Um, and it's realizing what the last three to four to five years when we started implementing the Seric alone, we saw a little uptick when we started bringing the orthophos in and really adding some of those adjunctive procedures, those things that are not the normal drill and fill procedures that we got to see a huge improvement in our overall production. Um, you could probably say that's also uh, th my graft or how I feel um, at work is it's, it's fun again. Um, there's new procedures. I'm always challenged and it's, and it's getting that being comfortable outside of your comfort zone. Um, so realize the improvement that's going on. Um, look, look back and kind of reflect on that. I think that's where like kind of the decay and the repose comes in into this being uncomfortable is looking back at that, look at that growth, re, uh, it re energizes you, refocuses you on things that you can do. Um, a little bit better. I've also seen a huge improvement in my team. They can tell you're nervous the first time you're doing um, something, but I definitely see they're quicker at, at setting up the surgical extractions. Um, they are um, uh, better and more confident in what we're doing. They know the next steps. They have the bone graft ready. They have the membrane ready. They know what we're doing when we're talking about just the improvement that I've seen in myself over the last four or five months. Um, so it's not only improvement in, in, in your overall practice, uh, but improvement in whatever you're trying to implement and what you're trying to do moving forward. Going back um, and recognize the improvement, I would highly recommend everyone to reach out to the different reps, um, whether it be one-on-one -on -one in-person meetings, if you guys feel comfortable doing that right now, um, or over the phone. Um, there's always things to learn. There's always CE. Uh, to learn in this particular downtime. There's always things that we can do to get better um, and really recognize um, that the, the improvement in what we can do right now, the things that we can control to move forward. And it just kind of rinse and repeat. Go through those, those six steps um, and realize what we're doing, why we're doing it for both personal growth um, and uh, for business growth. Um, and challenge yourself and it's kind of going through those those six or seven steps and learning how to be comfortable being uncomfortable i think all of us are in an, un an uncomfortable stage right now and it's kind of going through this process whether it's hr um whether it's sorting through all of the different facebook posts that are out there right now um whether it's uh, learning stuff on kind of starting to re-energize our stuff for the things that we wanted to br to bring on into the practice over the next uh, couple couple months, couple weeks, couple years, kind of getting that those goals set for short-term goals, long-term goals, and kind of getting that CE that goes along it. We have the time to research CE. We have the time to do this. We have the time to do that. Now we have the time to focus in on our families because my opinion is when this. Uh, I don't know, I'm not going to call it banned, but when this cycle comes back, there's going to be a lot of pent up demand for dental work. Um, and we need to hit the ground running. We need our teams up and running. We need to focus in on our teams, getting the AR down, getting that cash flow in so we can keep our businesses running right now. We need to improve our systems, whether it's our phone systems, work on our phone skills, whether it's our um, just the whole sorts of things that we can work on with our team, getting everything up and running so when we can get back to working, we can hit the ground running, take advantages of those dentists that are not doing anything at all right now, dentists that are ill-prepared to move forward, dentists that are, are could be terminating their whole team, and there could be some great uh, great people out there right now that could be great additions to our team. It's keeping our eyes and ears open learning as much as we can and kind of going through this cycle of rinse and repeat, being comfortable, uh, being uncomfortable, learning new things and bringing that on. So the last thing is hopefully we get back to this open road where we are in cruise control, where our practices are doing well, 
but I encourage everyone when we are on this cruise control that we are still looking um, and figuring out ways to improve and maybe taking a side road, maybe challenging ourselves and going down that windy road um, so we can add additional services um, or add things to our practice which our patients can value and then also can make our PAC practices grow and become more profitable at the, at the same time. So I hope this helps. Um, I hope this helps with your mindset. I hope it helps refocus everyone. And I hope it kind of we reviewed of what I think is going on, how we can use that to our advantage, and how we can prepare for what's next. This is Dr. Jonathan Ford. Uh, thanks very much for listening.